Welcome wonderful friends to the Sunday rune and card reading and today we have some amazing energy coming in from three incredible trees. I was really drawn to work with these trees this week. Um, we have cedar, we have holly and we have yew. It was quite interesting as I was out walking and I guess having a in, in quite a meditative state. I really heard to draw on both angel guidance and the wisdom of the trees and I had tuned in with cedar and holly and was literally arriving home and I, I just knew that yew was the last tree that was speaking to us. I knew which yew tree it was as well and so literally had almost got back to my doorstep and then set forth on another bit of the walk so that I could go and meet with this particular tree which was incredibly welcoming. Um, when I reached that. So um, yeah, I feel quite excited today to be doing this reading. I love it when the trees really reach out and want to speak with us. We're also going to be using two sets of runes this week as well as um, three different sets of cards. So wonderful friends, um, first of all, thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, truly guys, you are awesome. Um, for those of you who are already a part of this amazing community, thank you, um, you are incredible. And thank you so much to those of you who have been joining me in the collective prayer. I'm just gonna put this up because we are bang in the middle of this really, really intense period of astrological energy. And I'm hearing from people, quite a lot of people are experiencing that intensity in, in some people are experiencing it in that they're feeling really tired. Um, other people I'm, I'm hearing kind of like, almost like a series of mini breakthroughs coming through. Sometimes they're quite challenging, but it's like we suddenly see something clearly, something is suddenly brought to our attention. For a lot of people as well, it's almost things that we kind of knew, but hadn't quite, hadn't quite reached a clarity on. Um, so a, a lot of challenge nevertheless around a lot of intensity, but the higher energetic of this period is really opportunity for massive breakthrough, whether personally or globally. So just a huge thank you to all of you who have been walking with me, um, holding the light and holding that one minute of silent prayer at seven o'clock in the evening every day. And we'll be doing this through until the 24th. So we really are bang in the middle of this energetic, which is why I'm particularly um, you know, really, really grateful that the trees were reaching out on my walk yesterday. I felt it was a very, very powerful level of communication and channeling being opened for us. For anyone that is new to me, I'm Jenny Florence to this channel and the A to Z of Emotional Health. Let's move this. Um, guys, I have a subscriber offer every month. I give away um, a pack of the Art of Manifestation Oracle cards and also a free private reading. Um, if you'd like to be in that draw, I've just brought that up onto the screen. If you'd like to be in that draw, it is a subscriber offer. You need to be subscribed and then enter our subscriber email list. And I will put those in the information box below, the links to those and also time stamps so a lot of people like to sit with the extra guidance and when I draw the cards and runes but if you just already know which reading is speaking to you fast forward to it the timestamps are there and I will put them in the comments as well for Feng users so wonderful friends let us tune in to the additional guidance so let me move my runes for a moment so reading number one it's quite interesting so reading number one we have cedar now cedar is an amazing, an amazing tree. It's for me, whenever I've sat with cedar, it's as though I am sitting with, it's like I'm sitting with a council of elders. I think cedar really tunes us into our sort of our ancestry. Um, and, and this can be going back in, in our sort of genetic lineage, but also um, kind of more, it's, it's like we tap into the collective unconscious of really, I want to say all of life. It's, it's that phenomenal council of elders who are there to guide us. Now, the angel that came forward as well um, to connect in with cedar is, is, um, is honey calcite. Now, honey calcite is a, a stone of leadership. It's, um, it's said to really raise our vibration um, and it's in, it kind of enhances our ability to really walk that pathway of the spiritual warrior. So there's something for me in reading number one that's already coming through that is, storytelling is something I'm hearing as well. Either, either you are being helped to tell your story 
or there is an aspect of your story that is emerging that you're needing clarity with but that's the kind of flavor that's just that kind of that little message coming through there but honey calcite i've always associated honey calcite with archangel gabriel as well archangel gabriel the name gabriel in hebrew literally means god is my strength there's a huge sense of strength wisdom knowledge um, connection available to you going way way back maybe even to past lives so very profound at this epic period of very powerful astrological transformation now reading number two we are guided by holly and the energy of holly is going to be joined with um with cherry quartz a cherry quartz angel now holly is an, a very very interesting um very interesting tree i i personally have a lot of affinity with holly it's a very special tree for me i've um sat and, and done many a journey um, beneath a holly tree holly um it used to be laid on laid on coffins actually as they were lowered into the ground it's said to sit between the worlds it kind of has a flavor of the energy of crow if you're looking at the sort of the shamanic meanings now um, you know, Holly allows us to travel between the worlds, to see between different dimensions. It also brings tenacity, courage. Um, if anything, for me, I'd say perhaps what I'm hearing again, a doorway. It's like it's opening a doorway between the worlds. So if you're needing to see something, maybe reading number two is going to bring you that guidance. Now, Cherry Quartz is said to increase our overall energy. It brings a shift in our fortune. So if you are needing to step through a doorway at the moment, if or if you are hesitant, or indeed you're looking for a doorway to step through, it may be that reading two brings you the guidance that you need. In reading number three, we have a beautiful piece of yew, magnificent yew tree this came from, sitting just outside a church. Um, the church is, is actually dedicated to Mary. Um, and, you know, I live in an area where the Mary line, the um, energy, the actual energetic um, ley line, the Mary line runs through here. So um, that Mary church, a lot of the Mary churches are on the Mary line. And this, this tree sits right next to that church within the grounds. We often see yew trees growing in churchyards. Um, they bring um, protection. Um, they are said to symbolize everlasting life, um, rebirth, the regeneration, especially after a tough time. Regeneration, it's that death and resurrection along with the protection. And it's, it's interesting, I was really drawn to Tiger Eye, beautiful little Tiger Eye angel, angel, which is also a stone of protection said to bring good luck to the wearer, um, brings courage and strength, helps us to remain focused. Um, I personally find um, it's amazing to sit with tiger eye in meditation. I, I feel like the answers come to me if I'm stuck or something. So very powerful combination here. Um, but yeah, yew tree, everlasting life, rebirth. If you've been going through a tough time and you are needing to sort of rebirth yourself, refind some aspect of, of your pathway, it may be that reading number three is the one that speaks to you. You may, of course, find that more than one speak to you, which is absolutely fine. Um, for many people, that often happens. Just go with whatever feels right. So... I'm now going to draw cards and runes. Interestingly, I'm actually going to draw, <laughs> I'll just make a little bit more space here. Um, I'm going to draw the runes first, actually. And we're going to be drawing from more than one pack. Pack, it's not really a pack, is it? More than one set, <laughs> let's say. Okay, so we're going to have two from this set. So that's for reading number one. And reading number two. And reading number three. Now I'm now going to draw from a different set of runes. I need to make sure I bring them out in a way because I can't feel them in quite the same way. Um, I don't want you to see them <laughs> as they come out. <laughs> Otherwise that will not, um, and I don't want to see them either. I want to make sure that we start. I, I love these readings when we turn over the cards, the, the energy, the magic, as you turn them over and see what we're being shown is huge. Okay, so we're just gonna have one from each for each of these readings. There we go, great stuff. 
these are some runes that I actually made um, as part of the, um, I think we did a rune making workshop, um, which I think is still live on YouTube. It may not be, but I'm pretty certain it is. And um, yeah, it was a lovely, lovely um, webinar, guys. If you are interested in making your own runes, please do so, um, because it really, yeah, great, great, great fun. And we had so many beautiful photos from you guys who'd made your own. I mean, they really were magnificent. So thank you all of you who sent them through. We did put them on our Facebook page. So let's, let's now tune into the cards. We're going to draw a spirit animal guide card as well. It will be one of our, our first, I think. We're going to draw from the Light Seer's Tarot. Wow, cards flying out. We'll use those two for that first reading. And an Art of Manifestation Oracle card. one mm, it's interesting and actually yeah that's where we are so wonderful people um if you want to pause the video for a moment do please do so um if you just want to sit for a short while you may already know which reading or readings um you know again this is really trusting your intuition and um you can come back these i put them all in a playlist i, I post readings every sunday these three readings for weekly guidance I do put them into a playlist, so if you go to the home page of our AZ Emotional Health YouTube channel, if you're looking for readings, um, where you're looking for immediate guidance, then if you find that playlist, I mean, there are loads and loads of, of readings, and I'm a great believer that we find the right reading at the right time for us. So if you are needing to just find some guidance at any time, check in on that playlist, find um, whichever reading is speaking to you and, and you know, just tune in with it. They're there and stored in that playlist so that people can find them easily at a later date if they wish to. So my wonderful friends, thank you so, so much. Um, I mean, really, truly thank you for being a part of this amazing community. You guys are absolutely awesome. Um, really, truly listening to your comments, your shares and your shares and your likes. Thank you for those. But your comments, your support, not just of me, but of one another. You are amazing. So wonderful friends, I will see you in the readings. Welcome to reading number one. We have cedar, we have honey calcite, beautiful honey calcite angel, and let's have a look at our runes. Okay, so our first rune is the rune of possessions, but it's in reverse. Our second is the rune of constraint. That's interesting. It would suggest something isn't quite moving forwards as you might like it to at the moment. Or even maybe you are reticent. That's what I'm kind of being shown. There's something about a uncertainty or having a little bit of a wobble or a, I think there's something you want, but you're not quite sure about it in some way. Um, we then have the rune of initiation. That's a nice combination, actually. I this We'll look at the cards, I think, before I perhaps go any further, but there's something coming through here about the need to persevere with something and just tuning into the energy of cedar and you know that sense that there is a council of elders there sitting and waiting to offer you that guidance you are not walking alone i feel as though you are there's something you want or something has been initiated but you're not actually sure you're either reticent or you're a little bit fearful i might do some energy shifting in this as i often do with the runes um interestingly enough constraint for me um yes it, it says there is some form of restriction around you but sometimes it actually it comes as a, a message that says don't rush into this it doesn't mean you shouldn't be moving in the direction that you're moving in, but it's saying don't hurry it. It's almost, I, I want to say, sort of almost enjoy the journey. Um, 
allow it to unfold rather than trying to make something happen. The rune of possessions, it's, this is about ambition and, and you know, fulfillment. So when it's in its upright position, it says, you know, ambition is satisfied. If it's in reverse, it would tend to suggest that there's a learning curve on the way, on your pathway. So I'm kind of seeing different pathways being shown to me. So obviously this is a generic reading. Let, let's look at cards before we go any further. So allow yourself to receive. Okay. Parrot spirit, what's your words? I need to say these are your internal words. Really, really clearly coming across. Ah, here we are. Okay, guys, right. We, this is clear as to what this is about. Um, there's some aspect of relationship around you. And so first of all, allow yourself to receive. Now, one of the greatest blocks in our ability to manifest our greatest desires is an inability to allow ourselves to receive. This card asks that you take some time to identify any inner beliefs, perceptions, and attitudes that stop you from receiving, and one by one, remove these resistances. Now, here we have the Rune of Constraint. For me, the Rune of Constraint, it's kind of like, cross the T's, dot the I's. You need to attend to stuff. When, when fishermen can't go to sea, they mend their nets. It's kind of like, I, I feel, I, I think there is relationship around you, relationship on the horizon, or maybe you are seeking relationship. I, I want to say to you, relationship is on its way to you. If you're not in a relationship and you want to be, I think that door is going to open. Um, if you've met someone and you are wondering whether they are right for you, I feel that door is opening. What this reading is really strongly connecting into is those inner beliefs and attitudes that come sometimes through our current life experiences and sometimes through what I would almost call family attitudes that are in the way. Basically, we build resistance to the very things that we want because we're fearful of being hurt or we're fearful of, I don't know, stepping out of, out of line in some way or we haven't had a good role model or whatever it is for you. Those are the multitude of pathways I am being shown. But it almost looks like those multitude of pathways, what I'm being shown is it's like they've become like a spaghetti junction kind of roadway. And actually, they need to be cleared. It, it, there's some stuff in the way. If you ha if somebody isn't around you, if you are not in relationship and you want to be, I think that door is opening. But you may already know there's someone around you. You know, this this card, Knight of Cups, you know, it's kind of like get ready to be, you know, al allow this person to sweep you off, off your feet. Allow this person to knock your socks off. Um, allow yourself to believe in all of that possibility. Um, you know, this is coming to fruition. I mean, it's lovely. Where whatever situation you're in, this is suggesting that in terms of manifesting your dreams, you're going to be, you are going to be so much better together than apart. You're going to be able to do more together. I mean, the three of pentacles here, it often speaks of teamwork. It's about collaboration. I mean, you know, look at what's happening here in this card. You know, this beautiful, um, cloth is being woven and it's it's a collaboration it's a connection it, it's it's there's unity here bearing in mind the incredible astrological opportunity for breakthrough at the moment this is a very pivotal time for a process of initiation where you come through and out the other side of something it's interesting you know um, initiation the rune of perth it sometimes um it speaks of um, the eagle soaring free of entanglements. I love that it's sitting above this. It's, it's like free of entanglements, the freedom to engage, to be in relationship. I, I sort of feel these runes, it's interesting coming from different sets, different packs. Um, I feel these two are speaking to, to us about inhibitions, concerns, fears, worries, and of needing to kind of remove those, allow yourself to receive. Watch your words. I'll speak more about this in one moment. This rune sets apart because this this rune sits apart. It's um, This is the initiation into a new phase. This is the breakthrough, the um, elevation to a new way of seeing things, a different shift in consciousness that is available for you. Lean into any form of meditation. If, if you are able to 
sit with a cedar tree <laughs> or go out and sit with any tree that invites you. If you ask a tree whether it's okay to sit with it, you'll know whether the answer is yes or no because sometimes it's not, sometimes that's not, they don't want you in their space. You know, like us, they need a bit of privacy sometimes. Um, but actually, if a tree is open and willing to sit with you, the guidance they bring you is huge if you sit in, the, in their presence. And there's something about cedar that's very powerful here that can connect you to that process of understanding. That's the storytelling that came through at the very beginning when I was um, tuning in with this the storytelling. It's like there's something of your story that has tangled you up in stuff. Now, it could be your family story, your, your family's story. Um, you know, in those kind of beliefs, or it's something of the story that you have woven um, during the course of this lifetime or even previous lives. But I'm more inclined to think this reading focuses on this lifetime. And if it's previous lives, it's the genetic lineage and the inheritance within your family of attitudes and beliefs. Now, what's your words? This is really speaking to me very, very strongly. What's your words, your internal dialogue? Consider the way your, your mind is running. We all have an internal dialogue. It's running all the time, pretty much. And um, you know, it's why meditation is amazing when we stop it and we slow the noise. But if you stop sometimes and just listen to your internal dialogue, listen to those conversations. Um, I have to be truly honest and say, when I really stopped and started listening to mine, I was really horrified at how, um, how negative some of the stuff was. And you know, I'm a really positive person. I hadn't realized how much negativity there still was, often ruminating, going over things that, as a general rule, it was things that I couldn't change and I wished I could have done something differently. But actually, it's past. You, you know, we have to reach a point where we give ourselves permission to put it down. And there's something in this reading that really is about that. This parrot, this, I love the energy of it flying this way. It's, it's going away from you. Allow yourself to receive all of this. And, you know, get rid of that stuff. Let it fly away. It's time to place this card just over there, actually. Absolutely. Allow yourself to receive. You know, there is relationship around you. And I think this is a healing relationship and a relationship that will mend, yeah, mend old wounds. You're going to be better together than you are apart. It could, for some of you, be coming back together a regeneration, a reaffirmation in some way. But there's a healing quality to this that feels really good. There's something about teamwork coming through, and yet it's vibrant and loving and romantic at the same time. So feeling pretty good here. Honey calcite, that wonderful stone of leadership. I mean, again, it raises your vibration. So if you're carrying any residue of anything from the past that needs to be let go of, honey calcite's amazing because it kind of helps us to become our own guide, our own teacher as well. It helps us to tune into guidance and then to hold firm on that pathway, you know, to be what we wish to see in the world it is literally all about being that change. And that in this instance, it's a very personal change. It's very personal to you. It's letting go of this stuff, allowing yourself to receive. Um, th this feels lovely. It's very interesting. If I'm just tuning back in, I said I might shift some energy. Um, so just the rune of possessions in reverse. This really means there's something that we're needing to learn because the rune of possessions is about fulfillment, ambition, satisfied. And so when there is constraint around us, sometimes it's self-imposed, it's self-created by the kind of internal language, whether it's circumstances or otherwise, trust that you don't have to rush into this, just take it slowly, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the journey. This is a slow dance, okay? This is a, a really lovely, this is a lovely um, relationship unfolding. Enjoy it in, because it can bring you this fulfillment um, that you desire, that satisfaction, that, um, yeah, that, that sense of warmth, wellness within relationship. However, j just remove this stuff. I think if you allow yourself to receive, you open yourself up. Allow yourself to receive. M remove the inner dialogue. I think this rune then reverses. And curiously enough, I think it switches places here. It, it, we're then talking about constraint. Take it slowly. And it's leading to ambition satisfied. It's leading to fulfillment. 
and I really do think, yeah, enjoy the journey, wonderful friends. There is something very magical coming into your life here. Um, it's much deserved. It's so your ancestors are willing you and walking with you for this. Remember that in every day of your life that you dwell in happiness, you are raising the overall consciousness of all of humanity. Um, so just consider that it is your, um, your obligation and duty in a healthy way to be happy. You know, often we think of obligation and duty negatively. I'm going to put it out there in a really, truly positive light. Um, it is your obligation and duty as a healthy human being to be happy and to spread happiness and love and allow yourself to receive that. Wonderful friends. Um, I'm basking in this one. It's a gorgeous energy to be sitting with. Um, so for those of you who have tuned in, I'm a great believer the right reading finds the right people. The fact that um, your presence and, and your your connection to this community has generated this reading and um, I thank you for this because I am sitting here loving it. Um, so wonderful friends, so much love to you, namaste. Welcome to reading number three. So we have um, amazing Holly who opens doorways often, doorways between the worlds, um, brings us tenacity and courage, and of course, beautiful energy of Cherry Quartz, who often indicates a change in fortune. I mean, just gives us more energy overall. Let's have a look at our runes. Okay, so our first rune um, is the rune of openings. This is kind of out of darkness into light. It's finding direction, it's knowing where you're going. Um, yeah, renewed energy again, very much about moving forwards. It would suggest that you are in either in the process of a shift, I just think with the cherry, um, cherry quartz here as well, you're either in the process of a shift or, you know, literally something is opening for you here. We have the rune of initiation, so, very powerful again this can in in a material way it, it can suggest unexpected rewards surprises gains but ultimately we are talking about this is quite a magical part of your pathway what, whatever's unfolding and whatever's emerging what do we have okay we have the the spiritual warrior this is absolutely a very magical part of your own personal journey whatever you are whatever's opening up for you I feel like it has purpose. It is like a doorway opening. And the purpose for me, it's this holly connecting between the worlds. Um, your, it's a bit like finding your calling or meeting the soulmate, or it's got that sense of, it's not just a pathway or an opportunity that's opening. It's a pathway and an opportunity that is opening. Um, and there's a much bigger picture to this. There's a, there's a higher purpose to it. Very amazing given the sort of astrology, the, 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 this, peak, this peak of potential breakthroughs that we're sitting with at the moment. Let's see what, else, what we have here. So believe in yourself. Right, is there some aspect of, yes, and then dolphin spirit, this and that are true. Oh wow, page of cups and king of pentacles. This is, this reading is really inviting you to believe in your dreams. Believe in yourself. You are important. You are important. You are lovable. You are special. You are a unique and extraordinary person. Wherever you've come from, whatever has happened to you in the past, it is time to let go of any negative perceptions that you may carry about yourself. Very interesting, there's quite a flavour of negative perceptions being shifted and adjusted at this time. Opportunity within the sort of astro energy to kind of emerge, literally, literally to shift our perspectives in some way, to see something differently. This and that are true. This allows us to recognise, you know, in many ways, I mean, how much of what we believe is real? You know, and, and I don't mean that in a, you know, I'm sure I'm sure you understand what I mean by that in a from a spiritual perspective oh my goodness me I must just I have to say this to you the most extraordinary I have a bird of prey that has just landed wow now I this the, in my garden the most beautiful buzzard is now sitting 
on my hedge just in front of me. I don't think there's any way I can shift a camera around to catch that. But I, I'm just doing a big wow moment. Talk about a sign, a symbol. It's so fascinating that this rune of initiation is symbolized. I've flipped my glasses off because actually my glasses I use for seeing things that are close up. Uh, and and I'd, I want to watch the magnificence of this buzzard. And I'm going to say she, I'm almost certain she's a she, she's small, but wow, she's extraordinary. She is exquisite. I'm going to be very ecstatic about this. Um, the initiation rune is symbolized. Oh gosh, she's just beautiful. It's She's just moved across from one part of the hedge to another uh, and now she's moved on. Um, right, I'll put my glasses back on. I, I sort of want, almost was about to apologise for that interlude, but I'm not apologising at all. Um, I have always been taught that, um, you know, sometimes if we are shown something in a very magical way, it, it's, it's a confirmation, it's an affirmation when nature shows us this. The rune of initiation is symbolised by the flight of the eagle soaring free from something. You have an opportunity to let go of something once and for all. This year is about transformation. And yes, we are going through some extraordinarily tough experiences. Um, but the whole, from a spiritual perspective, if I really sit in, my me in, in so many meditations, what has come through to me is the higher purpose of what's going on is to turn our world upside down so that we re-evaluate, so we understand what truly matters. We align our own lives with the pathways that are right for us. Everything in this reading is saying, look, you can shift, you can walk through that door, the door between the worlds. You can walk through that door and once and for all, let go of something. I, I cannot tell you how every cell in my body is tingling with the arrival of, of that beautiful, beautiful bird. I mean, just stunning and so in tune with the energy of spirit arriving of the pathway of the spiritual warrior of the emergence of the shift in fortune page of cups says pigs might fly believe in your dreams lean into this space of magical energy that is around you dare to believe that your dreams can come true the king of pentacles overflowing abundance um it, prosperity and um, manifestation this this is all about manifestation of your dreams this and that are true don't you know we don't have to buy into or believe things that perspectives that actually fundamentally limit us it's you're being asked to really shift your perspectives particularly around your own self-belief your own belief in possibility you know I really want to invite you guys dream big really allow yourselves to dream big. It may not manifest overnight, but my goodness me, if you dream big and you hold that vision, the, the pathway, the steps may be shown to you. This is about opening doorways. It really is. Having a little chuckle actually to myself here, the page of cups, you know, um, it, it is the card of the dreamer and so, and so magical, so, so an invitation to trust. But I was, when I was at school, um, I, I mean, I've, I have always been a dreamer, always, always. Um, every school report would be, you know, Jenny must stop daydreaming. Jenny must learn to concentrate. Jenny must stop looking out of the window. I just need to affirm this, perhaps to myself, but maybe to you guys or any of you who are dreamers. I am so glad I did not heed that. <laughs> I am so grateful that I have remained a dreamer. I do not believe I would have manifested any aspect of my life um, in this present date, um, including so, I mean, just everything that I am grateful for if I was not a dreamer. So wonderful friends, dare to dream. This is, um, wow, I mean, it, it's an ecstatic reading and um, the, the confirmation of, of that beautiful, beautiful buzzard and definitely a female actually coming in that female energy. Um, really, what a validation of the opportunity to, um, to fly, literally. Um, let your dreams soar. Um, it is time for you to fly. A shift in your fortunes is on the cards, literally, and indeed in the runes. But this is very much part of your spiritual journey. You know, and there will be aspects of this process of manifestation that you may not be able to share easily with people. Not everyone will get it. It doesn't matter. This is your emergence, your breakthrough, your opportunities. It is time once and for all to let go of any lack of belief in yourself. Once and for all. 
wonderful friends. Um, I said this in reading number one too. Um, actually, a, a huge thank you. Um, I reveled in the energy of reading number one. I am reveling in the energy of reading number two. I'm now excited to see what reading number three will show. Um, when I do these readings, I get to dwell in the energy of them. And I am a true believer that the readings will find the right people. Um, and so in a way, they are generated by you. You know, those of you that are going to, however you call it, whether it's synchronicity, whatever draws you to these, or whether you are, are one of um, one of the wonderful members of this community who checks in with these readings every week, and thank you guys so, so much. Um, you generate these readings. Um, you know, it is the energy of you. I always ask when I begin the readings. Um, I ask to be a vessel and a channel to bring forth whatever is needed by those who need it, that that is the purpose. Um, that's my calling in service. So, you know, I but when I get to sit in an energy like this, I mean, it's just fabulous. And so thank you, all of you, so, so much. Um, without you, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, wonderful friends, so, so much love to you. Namaste. Welcome to reading number three. We have the magical, um, transformative, regenerative energy of you. Really about rebirth, everlasting life protection. Um, and again, wonderful, wonderful angel energy of Tiger Eye, a stone of protection said to bring good luck to the wearer. So let's have a look at our runes. Okay, so we have the rune of flow. We have the rune of Othilla, the rune of separation. And we have the rune of wholeness. This is the path you must follow. So first of all, the rune of flow. Um, this, is, this is asking you to, it's about the, the ebb and flow of life, the ebb and flow of careers, the ebb and flow of emotions, the ebb and flow of relationships. It's you flowing into a new phase of your life. But this is quite a big new phase. That's what I'm seeing. Now, Othilla, the rune of se separation, requires us to let go of something. It's usually something to which we've had an emotional attachment or it, it's something that was right for us, but is no longer right for us. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, if you had a coat that you used to wear and it just doesn't fit you anymore. The color isn't right. The shape isn't right. You've outgrown something, basically, and you are needing to, you're needing to let go of something in order to flow into a new space of being. What is interesting, though, this rune also does speak about, it speaks of happy endings, flowing into happy endings. Really interesting. We have the rune of wholeness, the path you must follow. It also, um, again, this is about regeneration, too which is interesting because the you, of course, is about the regeneration, especially after tough times. So what I'm hearing, you've been through, actually, you've been through a period of something that has been really, really challenging, and you are moving beyond it. You're needing to move beyond it, and you know that. You're on that pathway. You're in the process of shedding that skin. It's the path you must follow. You know this. But what I also hear is there's, this rune is speaking of needing to almost immerse yourself in day-to-day -day living. It, it's like allowing it to unfold and flow into being rather than trying to make it happen. There's a definite um, distinction here. See what, okay, open yourself to possibility. Love the dove spirit, be peace. Okay, we have strength and knight of wands. Right. This is really fascinating. So, first of all, open yourself to possibility. Almost everyone holds some limiting belief about themselves. These perceptions block us from receiving the infinite support of the universe. This card is an invitation to reassess and to look beyond these limitations and to recognise that in opening yourself to possibility, you automatically invite positive change into your life. There's something that you you've been through something this will be unique and personal to you to you each you have been through a, a tough 
you've had a tough time, you've, had, you've been through a tough phase in life or a tough period or a tough relationship or a tough economic situation or a tough home circumstance. Yes, there's a lot of toughness around us at the moment in the world, but for you guys, this has been deeply, deeply personal to you. It's weighed very, very heavy. This has been a hard one to shift. But we have this regeneration, this protection coming in with the tiger eye energy and with the yew tree. Um, protection, it is about resurrection. It's about regeneration. It's about re-engaging and reconnecting with life again. Be peace. Give yourself as much time as you need to immerse yourself in any aspect of relaxation that will allow you to cleanse. Yeah, cleanse, release, let go. Um, yeah, there's something you see, this is all about, this is fascinating here because the card of strength is a card of, in many ways, of courage, of, of, of graceful leadership. Um, it sort of says, even in the face of uncertainty, you know, remain calm, be peaceful, be centered. And this rune is saying, just immerse yourself in the process of emerging into a new phase, of flowing into a new phase. Let go of anything that is needing to be let go of, if anything is not right in your world. Yes, I think it means that you face some sense of stepping into uncertainty. It's like leaving something behind that was such a big part of your world, but it's time to do that. It's time to let go of it. The Knight of Wands is like taking that bold step to, you know, it's like a new adventure. Um, I, you know, it's, for me, it's a card that speaks of being bravely inspired to have a go at something new, to try something out, um, to just, to just trust that actually there will be a new adventure and it is going to be better than the one you've been journeying on. There is a big opportunity here. Now, in the astro energy that's been going on, which is why we've been, I've been, you know, reaching out and asking people to join with me in this one minute of silent prayer to hold the higher energetic of transformation, of breakthrough. Now, I am seeing for some people lots of mini breakthroughs. I think for you guys, those of you who have been drawn to this reading, it's not a mini breakthrough. It may come in little pieces, little increments, but the overall, the overall flow into something new is very, very big. This is really, really huge in terms of you emerging. But this reading is really saying, open yourself up to the possibility of a radically different world for yourself, actually. Open yourself up to literally a new, a whole new horizon that is nothing like you have ever experienced before and it is bigger, better, more exciting. It is, yes, it feels uncertain. There's definitely a sense of uncertainty around you, but this is the path you must follow. This is right for you. you whatever you've come through, whatever has been clinging a little bit, lingering, it's time to let go of it. It's time to move forward. It's time for you to be at peace and to find your peace and to know you have a sense of entitlement for that peace. I am, I have to say, I think some of you have experienced um, quite a significantly traumatic, um, there's been some really quite, tra traumatic is the right word I have to use, I think. There's something quite traumatic within your within the scope of your recent experience. It's either a circumstance for some of you, it was it was connected to a relationship and to a somebody. And you really, really are needing to move away from that. You're finding the strength to do so. You have the clarity. You know what you need to do, but it's also feeling like there's a massive wobble because you're stepping into the into the unknown. You're stepping into a space that feels as though there's so much uncertainty around it. But you also kind of, I think you know what you need to do. This is very powerful. What is magical here is that it, it's fascinating as I, as I move into the energy of where you've been, where you've come from, I, I can feel the weight of that actually. And it's, it's, um, it's deeply emotional as well. There's a lot of emotional residue around that. You're needing to move beyond this. Now, just while I'm sitting here, when we, when we come through a transition and 
there's an emotional residue that, that kind of clings to us from something. Um, we need to find ways to safely release those emotions because they em emotions, if we haven't been able to process them or they're left because from, from a, a difficult or traumatic experience, they literally sit within the body. They, they're within us at a cellular level. Um, um, and I mean, it is interesting that the rune of wholeness speaks of regeneration at a cellular level. Now, if you are carrying any form of residue of trauma, do please check out um, my library, the A to Z of Emotional Library. It is a completely free resource. Let's see if I can bring it up on the screen. Can it come up? Yes. There we go. www.azemotionalhealth.com. Now, the library is a completely free resource. It was, as I began to move away from, from the bulk of my counselling and psychotherapy work and start to do different things and reach out into the world and, and you know, try to reach and support more people in, in a different way. The library was in a way a sort of part of a parting gift to my profession. It started because I used to make um, audios and videos for my clients um, because they needed to touch base in between some of our sessions and go over things and the sort of information that we were share talking about and sharing in the sessions was I think we've kind of recognized it was helpful to lots of people because we often have similar experiences. So this is a ton, there's a ton of stuff in the library, including a whole series of meditations that help with emotional release and help us to understand how to use our emotions as a source of empowerment. Um, there's a, a section in the library, I mean, if you are finding yourself feeling very emotional about moving on from something, there's, um, there's a video called The Wobble of Change, which is really about that uncertainty and managing that, understanding it. And um, there's another one called The Sadness of Moving Forwards. You know, sometimes even when we step into something that we really, really wanted to, to you know, step into, we still have sadness and we don't know why. That video explains all of that, how we operate. I think that's the psychology of emotion section in the library. But anyway, I'm waffling away, but do check it out if any, if you're experiencing anything that is quite intense within this process of new emergence and new rebirthing into your world, um, do please use it as a resource. That's why it's there. So, dear friends, you have been through for some of you, it's it's a big event, and for others, it's almost like it was a build-up over a long period of time, one thing after another thing, after another thing, after another thing, each time weighing a little bit heavier, eroding your belief in possibility, kind of holding you down. Um, quite interesting. I know a lot of people were, have been hit very hard by the Saturn influence um, over the last few years as well, depending on where that sits in your chart. So just big stuff going on, very big stuff. It's time to be at peace. It's time to turn the high alert button down. It's time to allow yourself to flow into a new space of being. I want to say the universe supports your growth. That comes through really clearly. It's time for a new adventure. I mean, look at the energy and joy in this card. It's time for a new adventure. Um, it's time to, um, yeah, pursue your dreams, pursue your passion. Another little message coming through here as well. Um, for some of you, if you've been stuck in a, um, a rut of some sort, it may not have been directly traumatic, but it's felt it's been a rut. It's been eroding you. Um, and maybe there's uncertainty. Do you step into something that you really want to do with a passion or do you stay in the safe zone? Um, I'm going to say this reading is suggested, suggesting that you step into, in, into the uncertainty of your passion. Um, <laughs> that's definitely coming through loud and clear. It's like having the courage of your convictions. A very powerful shift taking place here. Lovely, lovely energy as I was leaning into what I could feel you come from. It felt very heavy. As I lean into the energy of these cards here, um, open yourself to that possibility. It's time to be at peace. It's time to embrace the new adventure. Go journey within, um, connect to your own, bec become your own graceful leader and let go of anything that no longer serves you. The world is opening up for you. It is time literally to cleanse, release and regenerate at a cellular level. Um, your world is going to be opening up step by step. You don't have to force it. The key here is much more to do with cleansing and release 
than actually trying to make something happen. The more you cleanse and release, so I'm being shown that really clearly now, it's almost like a doorway opening. Each time you shed, cleanse, release, um, another aspect of the doorway opens up for you and the next step on your pathway will be shown. Immerse yourself in the joy of emergence. Don't force it. Your work is shedding, releasing, cleansing. The universe will do the rest. My wonderful friends, so, so much love to you. Namaste.